On today's episode of Locked On Mariners, George Kirby has a career night while the Mariners stay hot at the dish. Our thoughts on the game and the possibility of trading for Cody Bellinger coming up. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. This is Ted Ang. Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On MLB to get $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube. Or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link as well as our social accounts is in the description of this episode. And on this episode, we'll be talking about George Kirby's career night and the Mariners' 9-3 to win over the Marlins last night. The offense was... Once again, spectacular as well. We're also going to talk about Cubs slugger Cody Bellinger for our trade today later on in this show. But let's start with Jorge, who dominated last night. Ten strikeouts over six innings pitched for Kirby. Uh, One run allowed on three hits. That run not earned, of course. No walks, as per usual, for George. And uh, just three hard hit balls on the night. So, Colby, career night for George. Break it down for us. How was he that effective against this Marlins lineup last night? Fastball for days. Um, Through 43 four-seamers, 26 sinkers, only 23 off-speed pitches last night. Um, Just 92 pitches. uh, Would have been probably had a good shot to go get through seven um, if the defense hadn't let him down a little bit in the uh, sixth inning. But, you know, so it goes. Uh, fastball velocity was up. He was pretty amped last night. Um, average four seamer was 95.7. Uh, and the average sinker was 95.3. That's a full mile per hour over what it usually is. Uh, and he was just on the corners with those pitches. He wasn't in the middle of the plate ever. And he got chases outside of the zone. Uh, De La Cruz just swings at everything above his shoulders. Um, I've noticed in this series. So, you know, George took full advantage he's had of that. A, he's had a rough series. I mean, to be fair, so has Luis Arise and so has Jorge Soler. I think yeah, the Mariners think they, own Luis Arise. <laughs> I think they've combined to reach base twice, like between those three guys twice in this mm-hmm. entire series. So, um, yeah, uh, George was just on the corners. He got chases with the fastball. Uh, pretty good uh, run on, on the fastball. Um, not not insane run. Uh, it wasn't particularly it didn't look like the pitch was moving more than normal, but it was on the corners more than it was in the middle of the plate quality strikes over just raw strikes. And he still didn't walk anybody. And, you know, there was the ridiculous article from Seattle times who said, Oh, George should probably walk some more guys. And it's like, no, no, you should never walk more guys. You could maybe throw more balls like, okay, but don't walk guys. That's, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, and George, you know, proved it last night. Uh, you know, everything was really good. He actually generated 20 whiffs, 38% whiff, um, last night, which is obviously very good. Um, but I think probably more telling is when you look at the, uh, called strike plus whiff rate, all four of his pitches were over 35%, which is Mm. pretty darn good. So Kirby, you know, again, just fastball two seamer pretty much all night, mix in some sliders, um, but really, it was the it was the four seam and the two seam that uh, really carried him. Uh, got lots of whiffs on those pitches, threw a ton of strikes with those, and just nothing really put in play all that hard. I think he gave gave up three hard hit balls um, all night. So George was great. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it was similar ish to how he looked against the Yankees, um, and it just kind of continues this pattern with both you know Kirby and Gilbert, where it's. They look like Cy Young candidates and all stars one start. And then the next start they get ambushed and yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully George can get on a little bit of a run here, but uh, yeah, he was really good last night and and the velocity was up and he was just 
hammering the fastball, just kind of the the belief that the Marlins couldn't touch his fastball. And, you know, for the most part, he was right. So he'll pass the baton to Luis Castillo tonight as the Mariners go for a sweep of the Marlins, who, of course, were red hot entering this series. Mm-hmm. But the Mariners have just flat out dominated them. Uh, you can catch game three of this series on the Mariners hometown broadcast with Sirius XM via the SXM app. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Castillo because uh, it was a weird start for him on Friday. Um, what would you like to see out of him tonight? Weird how? It was, I mean, he he gave up quite a few runs. He obviously had, you know, the, the Crawford error and then yeah. gives up a home run to Otani. There's like, sure. it was a weird, Thank- like it was, it was a start that could have looked better. He's two pitches away from just like dominating uh, an yeah. Angels team, who, by the way, is also red hot right now. Um, but yeah, obviously he he still made those two pitches, and they they were costly. So honestly, if he just does that again, I feel like you know he's probably not going to give up you know three. He only gave up three earned over six, but I, if he just has that same stuff again, that same command, he's probably going to be fine. The Marlins, as we've seen in this series, they're kind of struggling with that high fastball. Um, you know. Gilbert was able to uh was Gilbert Gilbert on Monday, right? On Monday it was Bryce Miller. Bryce Miller, thank you. Miller was able to dominate with the fastball up. Kirby was able to dominate with the fastball up. Call me crazy. I think Luis Castillo might be able to throw his fastball up in the zone and get swings and misses and get soft contact, uh, particularly against, you know, De La Cruz. So um for Castillo, if it's just get the fastball, you know on the edges get it keep it out of the middle of the plate and you'll be fine and and castillo can pretty much dominate well i don't want to say dominate castillo can manage this lineup with just his fastball if he has the slider or the changeup working then he has a chance to dominate uh but again with every single pitcher it's, it's a broken record but it's because it's true get value out of the fastball by having good command working on the corners and getting chases uh, with the off-speed stuff, that's that's the key for any pitcher, really. But with mm-hmm. Castillo, especially because of the stuff, because of the velo, he has he doesn't even need to be pinpoint with those pitches. Be on the edges, not in the middle of the strike zone with your fastball, and you're going to be fine. Um, you know, it's a it's a good pitching matchup tonight. It's a lot of good stuff being thrown. Uh, you know, in tonight's uh, between tonight's starting pitchers, so you know, keep your team in it. Uh, try and go. You know, you have the off day tomorrow, so. Going deep isn't necessarily important, but it's Luis Castillo. You want to see him go six, seven, give up, you know, two, two or three runs at most and just kind of dominate this lineup. Because honestly, once you get past the top three uh, guys in this Marlins lineup, the degree of get difficulty drops. It's it's not easy, obviously, because they're major league hitters and Miami is a very good team, at least right now. Um, but really, you get by if you keep a rise off the bases, which the Mariners have done it really uh, puts a a big damper on, on what this Marlins team can do. Can they hold a rise hit list for an entire series? I don't know. Probably not, but they did the first two games. So can they do it Mm. again? Can they put Solaire up at the plate in these situations where he can't do massive damage to you? Because if they can do that, then I think they have a really good shot of sweeping the series. And I think Castillo has a shot to dominate, but if he's middle of the plate, uh, if he's pitching out of the stretch a lot, then I think uh, the Marlins have a, have the opportunity to put a lot of pressure on his fastball command. And, and we'll see if Castillo can, uh, can kind of fix that issue, which is still an issue. Uh, his command from the stretch is significantly uh, worse. Yeah. Got to keep guys off the base pass again. Mm-hmm. You know, he was good enough to get the mirrors on the win column on Friday, yep. uh, but you know, obviously wasn't able to overcome some ex- uh, mistakes um, that were mm-hmm. not really, you know, his fault. Uh, so hoping for a, a cleaner game tonight. Now, the thing that we need to note here is that the uh, strike zones the last two nights have been abhorrent, <laughs> terrible. Last sure. night, uh, I think back to that uh, one, um, uh, I think it was a fastball to to a rise that would have made it one one, and it ended up being two zero. Even though it was like firmly in the strike zone, uh, there was yeah. obviously the weird thing with uh, the check swing from JP. Um, oh, that was definitely a swing. Yeah, yeah, that was. I yeah, this umpiring crew has. Uh, <laughs> it's been a rough one. They've been having a Brian De La Cruz esque series. You know what hasn't been rough, Ty? 
what the Mariners offense, which we're about That's to talk right. about. That's right. And we're going to be talking about that in just a moment here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. But first, a reminder, this episode is brought to you by game time buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater near you and with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hype for the fun you'll have so forget planning months in advance game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use promo code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem promo code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed and you're listening to the locked on mariners podcast thank you again for making us your first listen it is wednesday june 14th 2023 and you're seattle mariners folks Going for a sweep tonight with Miami Marlins. You can catch all the action on the Maris hometown broadcast with Sirius XM via the SXM app. So, Colby, chills. The Mariners offense did it again. Put up nine on, you know, Edward Cabrera and a, you know, pretty solid Marlins pitching staff. Mm-hmm. And they did it despite their top four hitters going over. Not a single one of them recorded a hit last night. It was the, Five through nine in the Mariners lineup that carried the load. And again, they put up nine runs. And look, yeah. small sample size, very small sample size. But since the Tuesday game against the Padres, the one that they won, mm-hmm. they're fifth in, in Major League Baseball, in WRC Plus, as an offense. They've been worth nearly two wins as an offense. They've been one of the most valuable offenses in baseball in that time. They're slashing 254, 351, 474. They have 13 home runs. I think they're like fourth in home runs. Uh, they're like fourth in walk rate. Uh, they're pretty much top five in, in every mm-hmm. offensive category you can think of over the last week. Again, very small sample size, but right. they're... It's, the numbers are reflecting the positives that we're seeing with our eyes right now. Yeah, it's it's not indicative of what will come. Uh, just that over the last five games or so, the Mariners have been very good uh, offensively. And I don't think they've a starter has gotten through six against them in that stretch. Um, they are jacking up the pitch count of these guys. They're getting to the middle of teams' bullpens. Um, and they're even hitting around the starter a little bit. And again, they're not facing a bunch of Tyler Anderson's here. They're facing guys with legitimately good stuff, guys who have produced legitimately good numbers. Um, and they're, they're just taking advantage of them. Uh, they're not striking out nearly as much either. Now, last night is kind of weird because they strike out, you know, only seven times, but three of them were JP Crawford. Like that's, that's unusual. But like you said, five through nine, um, really uh, stepped up and hey, you know what? But let's not bury the lead. Teoscar Hernandez, another walk. Like, that's right. Dude, that's right. Just, the dude Ring is just Derek Barton all of a sudden. That's right. <laughs> just up there to take a walk, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's funny. JP Crawford, 0 for 5, three strikeouts. Julio, 0 for 5 with one strikeout. Did have the two hardest hit balls of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, he's got to get that elevated. You got to get the ball in the air a little bit for that to be damaged. Uh, worthy, but you know, either way, robbed a couple times, fine, yep. whatever. Sure, uh, Ty France 0 for 3 with two strikeouts, did walk. Tay Oscar 0 for 3 with a strikeout, he also walked. But then you look at what happened five through nine. Kelnick 1 for 3, two, uh, 1 for 3 also walked. Uh, A. Eugenio Suarez 1 for 3 also walked. Cal Raleigh 1 for 3, three run home run also walked. Mike, why Ford, would you throw him a curveball? Yeah, I don't get it. The change up, why like, would you do it? Especially was, from the left side of the plate. What are you doing? <laughs> your best pitch is a changeup, and it's like untouchable. Lefties cannot touch your changeup. They haven't all year. And you're like, yeah. hmm, let's pipe a curveball right down the middle <laughs> and elevate it. Like, why not? Like, yeah, sure. That's a that's a great game hey, we'll, plan. We'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mike Ford steals the show three for four, two home runs. Hey, speaking uh, of stealing and Cal Raleigh, Cal. I know you watched yesterday's episode of Lockdown Mariners and got inspired. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal's mustache is better than yours. Um, and then, of course, you know, kind of the other guy who's who's collecting some buzz that I feel like I started last night and now people are hopping on to, but whatever. Right, right. Uh, Jose Caballero goes uh, two for three. He also walked once and he was, was he hit by a pitch? It's, it's, t- it's tough to remember. They all kind of run together now. Um, no, he walked. I think yeah. he walked. I okay. think it was just a walk, not a hit by pitch. 
He also yeah. stole. Did he steal two bags? He stole. He stole second twice. Yeah. 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 Kalnick also with a steal, by the way. So. Yeah. Yeah. Five, a third on the throw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Five through nine. And by the way, some one of the little things that I want to point out: uh, Kalnick busting his butt down the line after his check swing. Uh, yeah. Could have been a double play. Could have, you know, mm-hmm. pretty much ended the inning. But then he hustles it out. He beats the throw. Uh, Gino bloops a little single into right, and then all yep. of a sudden, here comes Cal Raleigh, and boom, that's the difference between three to nothing and zero zero. Uh, so you know, it's it's little things like that, and and you know, yep. you know, it's it's the the classic old dad, like that's why you always run it out, blah blah blah. But <laughs> it's not always you do need the to case. do it, you need to, you need to do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there, there are times where, like, I'm not going to get on a guy like the Robinson Cano thing, right? We all remember the Cano. Like, Oh, he hit that ball 115 miles an hour right at the second baseman. He didn't even sprint down to first base. Like, come on, come on. But in that yeah. situation, just to, you know, be aware and be enough of a, a ball player, essentially, to know, you know, I can extend this inning, even though I'm really mad at myself for what just happened. Uh, you know, that that is something that Kelnick does bring to the table that other guys don't. Just that that kind of mm-hmm. angry I don't know what you want to call it, like the angry, like grit is the word. Sure, that you're there you for, go, Corey. grit. There you go, grit. <laughs> sure, why not? Hard worker, whatnot. He's but, a gem uh, rat. Yep, yep. First one in, last one last, out. Yep, of course, of course. <laughs> but yeah, the offense. It was just so weird because you know last or on Monday night it was kind of one through five, kind of carried the offense, and uh, it was the middle of the order guys. You know, it was it was Gino and it was you know Murphy contributed at the bottom, but it was mostly the middle of the order guys. Last night it was the bottom of the order almost exclusively and that's that's great um that is a positive uh in the right direction and and you know obviously right now they're they're catching a little lightning in a bottle with mike ford um which is great honestly all-star needed. dh mike ford i mean your don's not going to be able to play in the all-star game so that's that's right so there, I don't know. Maybe a gap you, to fill in the American League, mm-hmm. and Mike Ford is the man to do it. Maybe if you lazy bums started voting for more Mariners, <laughs> we might actually have a shot to do it. But you're not, by the way. JP for ASJ. If you want that, Luis Castillo. ASG. Card. ASG. Dang it! I did it again. Austin awesome Safarian Jenkins just living rent free in your Husky head. fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but Cabby for ASG. I mean, he's the second most valuable second baseman in like. Uh, the or fourth in the American League, I think, in F4. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, he's more deserving if Ty wants to pretend like you know what you did in the past doesn't matter for all star game stuff. He's more deserving oh, of Jose that's, Altuve. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now you're making an argument based on who's the most deserving not, of an all star ballot. I'm not the one who tweeted uh, Jose Caballero for ASG or whatever. It's true. That was you. That's that true. Was you. That's true. Oh, that's I true. all I did was point out that, um, the number of second basemen who have as many plate appearances as Jose Caballero with a higher on base percentage, WRC plus and F four is Luis Arise, and that's the entire list. So yeah. Jose Caballero. Caballero. He's him. He's Chills. Him. Chills. She'd still probably look to up upgrade second base, but sure, Cabby's doing the job right now. I mean, how can you upgrade at second base when it's literally just Luis Arise and then Jose Caballero? Somebody who can hit righties at all? He he is Jose Altuve, Colby. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, one of one of the tweets that like really popped off last night on the CTZ uh-huh. account. Yeah. I think it's a fun one. I didn't think that anybody would care, but apparently people did. Uh, last night, Mike Ford entered the game hitting 167, 250, 500. Mm-hmm. So 107 WRC plus his entire value is essentially the two home runs he had coming yeah. into last night's game. Yeah. By the end of the night, Mike he Ford is slash. More. Yeah. And he <laughs> sla- ended up his uh, overall numbers now after one game are up to 273, 333, 818. <laughs> and his WRC plus literally doubled to 214. That's right. I think he can sustain that slugging percentage. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, let's be honest, he's basically Barry Bonds. So, yep. yeah, move he, over Jared he, Kelnick. Mike, Jared, Barry Bonds, Kelnick, Ford. Sure. Yeah, so it's, here. it's been it's been a fun uh, ride for the offense the last few days. You hope it continues Wait, at some point. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is His middle name is Harrison, right? So yes. Harrison Ford, yeah. Harry Bonds. There you go. 
Harry Bonds. Uh, yes, the Mariners are the only team in baseball with two Harrison Fords in their organization. That's right. Um, but yeah, Never so tell the, me off- the odds. Yeah. <laughs> the offense uh, has been really good the last few days, and it's been fun to watch. At some point, they're going to get shut down. Like, yeah, they're going to go out. They're going to leave guys on base. They're going to strike out 15 times, and it's probably going to happen against like some triple A. Yuri, Yuri you know. Perez. Yeah. I, I'm, well, I mean, Perez is a little different. He's, you know, a great prospect. No, yeah. Amazing no, stuff. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're probably going to go out there against like whoever Chicago's number five is on Saturday and be like, well, we struck out 11 times in six innings against him. And it was his career start. Like, a start mm-hmm. like that is going to happen, but that's because it happens to every single offense in Major League Baseball. The Mariners aren't special in that regard. They're not different in that regard. But for now, it's been a lot of fun. And and the even if that happens tonight against Perez, the uh, growth and and what we've seen over the last five games still stands. This is an offense that can keep the line moving. They can hit home runs. They can draw walks, and if they can avoid striking out a ton, right? If they can just continue to work pitch counts and even if you strike out have a good at bat get the pitch count up see some see you know hit some balls hard like just if you have an offer find a way to still contribute it's nine versus one and try and get that pitcher out of there and try and get to the the you know the soft underbelly of most pitching staffs which is you know third time through the lineup for a starter or or the fifth sixth inning guys out of the bullpen and that's how you have to do it and that's how the mayors have been doing it and so even if they take a step back one night here in the, in the near future, it's going to be okay. You know, just don't let the trend continue. Just reset, reload and go back at it the next day because the offense that we're seeing right now, it's not unsustainable, like over a a big picture uh, term. It's not like they're putting up, you know, 15 runs and, and like last night they had eight hits, you know, like the Mariners can't get eight hits. They had eight hits, Mm -hmm. but they had, Wait, what? Two, four, yeah, six walks to seven strikeouts. Mm. That's going to play. That can play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just you know, offense is in a good spot right now. And and if they can maintain roughly this over the next until the all-star break, they're going to win, you know, they're they're gonna be five, six games over five hundred if they can sustain this for, for the next twenty five games. So let's talk about adding some firepower. To this offense mm-hmm. you're listening to the lockdown Mariners podcast thank you again for making us your first listen again you can catch the Mariners of the marlins on the Mariners hometown broadcast of sirius xm via the sxm app tonight um also real quick colby mentioned this hashtag jp for asg we're running a giveaway colby's giving away a signed luis castillo card all you have to do to enter into this giveaway is send us your all-star ballot you don't have to vote for the National League. Just show us that you voted for J.P. Crawford, and uh, you're in. So uh, we want to try and get J.P. to the All-Star game because J.P.'s had a a really good year. and Last night notwithstanding, yes. Not, last night notwithstanding, uh, but sure. he's also, you know, like I, 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 you look at the numbers and it's probably, you know, like, yeah, he's, you know, slightly above league average, you know, whatever, but like. I think he's fourth in the American League in WRC Plus for shortstops. Yeah, so that's the point that I was trying to make is oh, relative sorry. to the rest of yeah, relative to the rest of the American League and, and American League shortstops, he's been one of the most valuable there. So mm-hmm. I think that it, he should at least get heavy consideration for that third shortstop spot right, on that roster. By the, yeah. By the way, I haven't seen anybody take advantage of this yet, but we are accepting ballots via email and Twitter. All yes. right. And uh, the email crowd is showing up. I, I think it's about fifty fifty. Uh, legitimately so shout out the email crowd yeah so maybe next monday we'll do email only uh mailbag for the the email crowd that which is showing up but also sure. uh side note we never said one entry per person so if you want to tweet us you know a new ballot every single day yeah more entries it just increases your shot so you know, more votes for JP, more entries to win this card. And, and you know, remember, if, if JP gets in, even if it's as a replacement or anything like that, we're going to be giving away more than just a card. Um, I've, yep. I've started to collect some fun things that I'm going to throw. Uh, Ty's going to get you a couple of, like, club seats in the All-Star Club and, and throw that in the box, and everything will be great. God. So, yeah, that, that's happening. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, uh, Ty, I'll you get you back at some point. I'll get you back at some point. Yeah. Don't worry. Well, do you want to tell people about your your the other like deal that we made with the fundraiser? Oh yeah. So the the tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I have an update. Um, I wasn't sure if it was still happening because I hadn't heard back from the artists after I sent the deposit in, but we got in contact and it's happening. So June twenty fifth at three o'clock my time eastern time in toronto oh. i'm gonna be uh getting it uh getting it done and we're gonna be recording that uh, vlogging vlogging sure it's gonna be a, a i want to vlog all right all right like a fully produced vlog all right i'll show you me brushing my teeth and all that and i, I mean yeah whatever a whole routine a whole routine yeah uh all right so yeah so look forward to that i don't know when exactly that is going to come out because i have to edit all of that and everything um and that's not really that's not really uh in my wheelhouse but we'll see how that goes and uh yeah true everybody knows i'm the editor right (laughs) video editor right right yeah you can throw that on your resume uh all right excuse me have you not seen the plan no, I'm I'm telling you that I, I was being I was being genuine. That is local Emmy worthy. I know but... it's rare for me to give you a compliment, but I was actually being genuine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go check that out, guys. It's a fun series I did. Anyway, so yeah, June 25th, I'm gonna get that done. I'll take pictures. It'll go up on Twitter and everything, but I'll also be posting a video of uh, the whole process as well at mm-hmm. some point. So look forward to that. All right, Cody Bellinger. Uh, I said to you today, I wanted to talk about Seth Brown, but you were like, no, let's do Cody Bellinger. Uh, you, by the, you thought that uh, we had already talked about Seth Brown. Uh, we did on Fan Fiction Friday, but we didn't yeah. via trade a day. So. Because I thought Seth Brown was a great place to start, and you're like, no, let's do Andrew McCutcheon, because that'll never happen. So let's start I, with that. I, I like Andrew McCutcheon. Who doesn't? I wanted, I wanted to talk about Who Andrew McCutcheon. Who doesn't like Andrew McCutcheon? But still. I, knew, I know that it's not going to happen, but I still wanted to talk about Andrew McCutcheon. All right, fair enough. Well, right. today we're talking about Bellinger. Let's talk about Cody Bellinger. Uh, this is, like yesterday with Eduardo Rodriguez, not very straightforward. A uh, little yep. complicated. Not as complicated as Rodriguez, but still, eh, it's it's potentially expensive. And uh, there, there's a couple levers here to talk about. Uh, first thing, Bellinger's hurt right now. Uh, he's got a knee thing that's kept him out since May 15th, May 16th, rather. It's a um, uh, knee contusion. Uh, he's going on a rehab stint soon, though. Starting tonight. Still, yeah, so he's he's on the way back. He'll be back. Barring, you know, by setback. the All-Star break. Yeah. yeah. And it's a knee contusion. It's not a tear or right. fracture. It's, it's, a, it's a bad bruise on his knee, mm-hmm. which, as you know, stiffens up and obviously, yeah. Uh, so the thing that we need to address here, though, before we get, uh, dive into the numbers and, and all that on Bellinger, is that uh, obviously he signed a one-year deal this year uh, for $17.5 million. Um, but that does come with a mutual option, which is worth $25 million. And the buyout on that is not, you know, typically buyout on a mutual option, $1 to $2 million. Nope, it is $5.5 million. So, right. Uh, it is worth noting, though, that Bellinger's base salary for this year was only twelve million dollars. Mm-hmm. So, if you're worried about like having to pay him half of seventeen million plus the five million dollar buyout, no, it's half of twelve million plus the five million dollar buyout. If he right. if he opts out, right. So that's a whole another conversation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's complicated. <laughs> Bellinger got out. Got off to a really hot hot start, but in the month of May, before his injury, uh, he only slashed 226, 276, 302 with a 53 WRC plus. But overall, yeah. on the year, um, he's slashing 271, 337, 493 with a 122 WRC plus, seven home runs, uh, 20 ribs, nine stolen bases. Mm-hmm. His career high is 15 in a season, so he was well on his way to surpassing that. Now, with a knee injury, who knows? Uh, if that's going to be a part of his game for the rest of the year. But uh, that is something to note. Uh, he was worth one and a half F4, essentially, uh, through the... Uh, how many games did he play? 37, uh, 37 games that he yeah. played. <laughs> so, all right. So what do you, so what do you think? Um, Bellinger, um, you know, obviously was terrible for the last couple of years in LA, but he's found himself, at least in the month of April, he found himself again uh, against Chicago. So, 
Yeah, that's kind of the the question, right? Like, is April Bellinger real or is May Bellinger real or is there somewhere in between? Like, yeah, that's kind of the big question here because twenty five million dollars for, you know, essentially twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two Bellinger is a bad deal. Uh, and if that's who he is for the rest of the year, he's probably going to exercise that option. Now, the beauty of that is, is that the Mariners, if that's the case, they can get out of it. They could pay him $5 million to go away, which they probably would if he looks like he did in May for the rest of the year. Um, but if he doesn't, if he looks you know, anything like he does in, did in April, $25 million is not only a pretty good price for Bellinger, it's also a price that he might consider taking. Now he might not. I would say I would say the overwhelming odds are is that Bellinger ends up being a rental for whoever acquires him. Yeah. Um, I right. would say I would say that as well because if, if if he has a great end to the season, he's probably hitting the market trying to get, you know, a longer term deal especially in, still, in a weaker market because like he's still, winter is. How old yeah, he's 27. Is he? He's 27 He'll, years old. Yeah. He turns 28 I think a few days before I think in a month, a month from today. He turns yeah. 28. And then if he's bad, again, the, the Mariners are going to pay him to go away. So Right. Or yeah. ever acquires it. Or, yeah. but, right, we're already over. But mm-hmm. So here's the deal with Bellinger, right? He's a really good fit at his best. Uh, he's a good fit for anybody, but he's a particularly good fit for the Mariners because he can play first base, but he's also really good in the outfield. He's one of the better defensive center fielders in baseball, even as the bat has struggled. He's already up to three outs above average this year in center field. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's actually probably a better outfielder than he is a first baseman, but he does have that versatility can play all three outfield spots and first base. Obviously he would DH quite a bit for the Mariners as well. He's a good athlete. He is a pretty fast runner, 79th percentile on sprint speed. He can steal bags. Uh, and the power is not going to be something that's going to diminish in Seattle. Uh, it is left-handed pull power. It is, you know, textbook for taking advantage of, of T-Mobile park. Uh, in right field at his best he is a tremendous fit for the mariners at his worst he is not a major leaguer and you're only going to get him in theory for about two and a half months give or take what is that worth he's also you know had some platoon splits in in the past too now this year he's actually hitting lefties better than righties but that's you know that's not always the case so it's just Mm -hmm. one of those things where how much do you trust Bellinger? Because the upside is tremendous. Like you could get in theory a, you know, a guy who gets MVP votes for two months mm-hmm. and add him to the lineup. And he's a lefty, which you need. He's a power lefty, which you need, but he's also a good defender, which you need. Or you could basically be trading for Joey Gallo. Like, yeah. It's it's tough, man, because there is a lot of intriguing positives with Bellinger. There's also a huge glaring negative, and the Mariners have to decide which one do they think is real, or whoever acquires him has, and how much is that worth for two months? It's a really interesting conversation that we probably can't do justice, um, you know, in in five minutes. But it's you have to talk about it because, like it or not, Cody Bellinger does make a lot of sense for the Seattle Mariners. Yeah, he does. And uh, I mean, because again, we've talked about wanting to add left handed power to this lineup, um, especially for T Mobile Park. Um, yeah. the, how, however, many games that he plays after his, you know, rehab stint, going to be incredibly important. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm really interested to see like what the asking prices from Chicago and Chicago has been kind of weird where they haven't fully, you know, dove into a, into a rebuild. So maybe they think that Bellinger is a part of this thing long-term for them. Um, be, even yeah. though that he's, uh, you know, uh, probably hitting free agency again next year, no matter what. Um, so I'm really interested to see what the asking price is on him um, with the money involved and, and, and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this is a team that, you know, didn't trade uh, Wilson Contreras. Obviously, you know, different situation because of the qualifying offer and all, all that stuff. But um, I mean, they could swap a they could slap a qualifying offer on Bellinger too if he opts out. They can, yep. Yep. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, can they do that if they opt out? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so they they give up their right when they do that. 
I'm pretty okay. sure that that type of language would be baked into the contract. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting. I I mean, like, all right, in terms of just prospects real quick, we're over already, but like yeah, just yeah. To, to quickly put a bow on this in terms of prospect capital, like how, it, let's say that he's essentially what he was in April. What are you willing to give up for Cody Bellinger? Knowing that you're probably only going to have him for two months. If I am, if I, if I'm feeling confident that he's April Bellinger, I'm probably mm-hmm. willing to give up somewhere in the Tyler Locklear, Jonathan Classe, that type eight, nine, ten prospect plus something on the back end. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's Dollard. Maybe it's like I, I would consider giving up Montez, Lazaro Montez, in a deal too, mm-hmm. um, along with even somebody like Locklear, just because Montez is so far away. Um, so if I'm convinced that Bellinger is that guy that he was in April for me, I would still be pretty aggressive, but I wouldn't trade Wu. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't trade Hancock. Like I, I would not trade any of my top really seven or I wouldn't trade Arroyo. I wouldn't trade Felon in. And, and obviously, you know, you're not trading Ford or young or, or Miller or anything like that. So yeah, I think it starts with somebody like in the eight, nine, 10 range for me. And then maybe it's like another top 15 and then it's like a top 25 ish type of guy, but more bulk than anything is what I would look to for Bellinger because a bulk deal protects me too, in case he's not, um, you know, I'm not giving up Brian Wu, who's going to go and be a, you know, a three win pitcher for the next five years mm-hmm. on the hopes that Cody Bellinger is, you know, a, the one and a half win player. He basically was in April alone. That's, that's a bit risky for me. And a bulk, bulk deal might make sense for the Cubs considering again, how they've, yeah prefer to to build their roster uh, especially over the last couple of years as you know the rizzo bryant's etc of the world have left mm-hmm. um so again we'll see you know obviously jerry has outright said you know we prefer guys who are under club control you know yes. uh, he's said but, that for five years and he's traded for rentals for five years so yeah and you know colby and i you you or colby you and i are both on the uh, same page here when it comes to uh, rentals that the the Mariners certainly should not be adverse to them, and if they are, like it seemed like they were last uh, deadline, at least in terms of the high end, uh, that would seem to be a mistake to me. Yeah, not a lot of high end rentals actually got moved, but yeah, that's, it did seem true. like they were true they were not willing yeah. to to go down that road. But it's time impact yeah. over control years. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidy Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, the C-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-C, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Lockdown Mariners. That's one word, Lockdown Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.